Welcome to this edition of CEO Corner. I'm Otis Rawl, President and CEO of the South Carolina Chamber of Commerce. Today we're happy to have Daryl Scott, our Vice President for Public Policy, to talk about the legislative session that just ended about a week ago. Uh, we started out with a very aggressive agenda from the business standpoint, particularly coming out of the elections, where jobs, jobs, jobs was the number one issue facing our public policy makers as they came back to Columbia in January. The competitive agenda that was generated from our grassroots meetings across the state, meeting with CEOs across the state, looked at issues such as tort reform, UI reforms, uh, spending caps, regulatory reform for DHEC and particularly business license, as well as looking at education funding to make sure that we continue to put an emphasis on education so that we can have a skilled workforce as we move into the next uh, decade. Darrell, let's talk a little bit about what went on. I think probably the most uh, important issue facing the business community during the last session was uh, unemployment insurance reform. We made some reforms last year. They were implemented. We needed to tinker with it a little bit simply because of the array system and how the, the dollars were distributed and how certain types of classes of businesses were penalized. Let's talk about what the General Assembly did to try to uh, reconstruct that a little bit to be able to bring the rates down for the business community. Right. What did they do? Uh, well, you, obviously you referenced last year the Employment Security Commission was was greatly reformed and we're seeing a lot of cost savings from those those efforts by the General Assembly. Uh, but there were some key issues coming back uh, dealing with tax rates uh, that we did need to go in and tinker with. Uh, this year employers should see about a 25 percent reduction uh, in, from their initial bills that went out in January to to going through this year. Uh, the General Assembly did three key things uh, to bring those bills down. Uh, first, they uh, added $146 million from general fund dollars to pay the federal government or pay the business community's portion of the federal loan repayment this year. That's a tremendous cost savings, uh, not only for this year, but will have a ripple effect. Uh, as you know, right. we owed $933 million and the business community was gonna have to come up with that money over, over time, five years, six years, seven years. Uh, with them paying 146 down, that's that right. much different than we have, that much less that we have to pay out. Uh, the second key measure, and a number of other states are starting to move in this direction, uh, South Carolina reduced the number of state benefit weeks, which our employers pay right. for directly, from 26 weeks to 20 weeks. So that'll be a savings for all employers. Uh, and the final thing that we did, we have a number of employers that have some sort of seasonal workforce component. Uh, and they are allowing employers to have the option of whether or not they pay unemployment benefits to seasonal workers or not. And that's something that North Carolina already does, and we basically mirrored their law. Those were the three key changes that should result in about a 24, 25% reduction in unemployment well, insurance. Well, I think year. we gotta give kudos to Senator Leatherman, Senator Ryberg, and, and Representative Kenny Bingham for working out the, the nuances of the changes. and they, did a yeoman's job in coming up with some reforms that really means a lot to the business community. So kudos to those three guys. One of the other issues that uh, we thought we really need to be addressed this year, and we've been working on it for probably four or five years, uh, is tort reform. Uh, we've continued to slip a little bit in our rankings from a uh, national level when states are ranked from friendly litigant type states. Uh, what do we do to improve the uh, legal system in South Carolina so businesses will be protected a little bit more from those, those what we would believe would be frivolous lawsuits. Yeah, we didn't get much traction in the Senate much of the year uh, and then towards the, the, the end of session, uh, Senator Larry Martin, Senator Harvey Peeler and Senator Brad Hutto all kind of sat down and worked out a, a, a final negotiated package. Um, the business community and the trial lawyers sat down, uh, were kind of at, at, in, at odds on uh, where, what the final package should look like, right. but uh, we feel like we got a pretty good, uh, pretty good deal. Uh, we do have now a cap. We were the only southeastern state to not have a cap on punitive damages. We now have a cap, uh, basically that mirrors the Florida cap at five hundred thousand right. uh, dollars. Some other states that we compete with, North Carolina, Virginia, have lower caps, uh, but we were not even in the ball game as right. it related to that. For, for punitive damages. A couple other key issues that we got in the tort reform bill, uh, there, there, we've had some issues with local solicitors suing our businesses yeah. around the state. Uh, we've passed a, a piece of legislation this year that will force 
uh, any solicitor that brings any sort of civil action uh, to have that approved by the Attorney General. Uh, initially, the trial lawyers had gone to the Attorney General and asked for this lawsuit to be brought on behalf of the state. The Attorney General said no, right. and they went to the local solicitor. So hopefully it cuts, cuts down on some of those frivolous lawsuits, or at least that the Attorney General elected by the entire state doesn't see merit in. Yeah. Uh, and then we did some other things, capping appeals bonds and things like that that should help. Uh, boost our rankings that uh, so many businesses look at uh, in deciding whether to locate or expand in a state. Well, we just need to make sure we thank our partners in the Civil Justice Reform Coalition for everything they, they did to help us move that down. And uh, this is a, a never-ending journey on, on tort reform, and we'll be looking down the road to look at uh, non-economic damage caps and, and look at some other tort issues to make sure that we continue to be competitive. One of the other issues that uh, we had problems with is on the environmental front, where our state regulations and federal reg regulations don't necessarily match up. And I know we've got some changes in regulatory reform this year to be able to match those policies up. So how did the General Assembly do that there? Yeah, we, we've had, obviously, uh, under the new administration, had some overreaching uh, regulations come in from EPA, also the National Labor Relations Board, uh, specifically to the environmental front. If, if, uh, which, which is what's happening a lot today, the feds, EPA specifically, kicks down a regulation. The states are forced to accept that. Right. Um, some of those regulations, oftentimes, a federal judge steps in and says, federal government, you cannot do that. Uh, some states automatically vacate that rule when the right. federal uh, regulation gets vacated. South Carolina was not one of those states. So we passed uh, legislation this year it helps DHEC, it helps the business community, uh, smooths out that process, right. but um, if the General Assembly goes home in June uh, and a federal judge kicks down a fe federal regulation in August, our businesses aren't at a competitive disadvantage for four or five or six months till the General Assembly can take right. action on it. It's automatically vacated for, our, for, for South Carolina. Well, I know that uh, one of the other things they did right early in the session was that during the November election, um, a resolution was passed to by about 86 percent a constitutional amendment that would say that our employees still have the right to have a secret ballot election in South Carolina and the General Assembly took the final actions right. to put that into law too. Yeah, that's now law and I know uh, some other states that also passed that have, have uh, been sued uh, right. already uh, so we're expecting possibly that that challenge comes uh, to South Carolina as well. I know Attorney General Alan Wilson's working closely with the NLRB to try to keep our, our constitutional amendment intact. Well, I know that uh, uh, we, and we should really give a lot of accolades to the House of Representatives this year. They really hunkered down and worked really hard to move our legislative agenda through. I mean, there were a lot of things left on the table in the Senate, and it wasn't the fault of the House because the House really got uh, those bills over to the Senate early in the session, things like spending limits, which was important. Uh, a department administration. Uh, we got business license reforms coming down the, the, the pipe. So, yeah, we, we, we left a lot on the table and we got a lot of work to do in the Senate. And uh, I, we just got to find a way to, to move those through and, right. and make those things a little bit more pertinent. What, what's the prognostication on next year on these well, issues? Well, the good thing is it is a two-year session. Yeah. Um, as you referenced, we probably could have gotten some of those things out this year. Charter school reform, giving more options to, to parents and, and, and students. Uh, to equalize funding for public charter schools. Uh, it's something that got near the finish line in the Senate but didn't get quite over the hump. Um, but I think, you know, there's, there's more and more telling stories coming out with, with, uh, with other states moving ahead of us in rankings. Uh, the yeah, CNBC, particularly CNBC's uh, CNBC ranking. CNBC ranking, you know, a lot of folks are, are, are hold to the fact that we're in the top five or top ten pro-economic yeah. development states or whatnot, but the CNBC study is a, a broad uh, probably the broadest study uh, of where people are. Uh, two of our competing states, Virginia and North Carolina, are in the top five. Uh, Florida, Georgia, and Tennessee are all in the top, top 20. 10, yeah. And we've moved from 31st to 37th. So they're yeah. moving up and we're moving backwards. So we still have a lot of work to, to well, do. I know a lot of things that we have poor rankings on, like uh, access to capital. We've got angel, the angel capital legislation, which is Bill Wiley's uh, bill that's it's passed the House and sitting in the Senate. We've got some quality of life issues. We've, we've talked about infrastructure 
a lot in how we've improved our roads and bridges and the port. Left a lot on the table, and if the South Carolina could be in that top echelon, we've still got a little bit of work to do to move this state forward. But uh, we decent year, but I wouldn't say a great year.